Hello, hello, hello. Good day also from my side. And today I will be talking about ad hoc development versus API strategy in the open banking. And it will be presented by man with default in the R. So, me. Uh, my name is Arto Oinonen, complicated name for non Finn. Uh, I'm API developer champion at uh, Open Financial Group. I have been doing over a decade of software integration, all level or something. I did my very first API integration into production in 2005, integrated with the Pistalak uh, external API called to SAP. So it's quite a long time. At that given time, I was main job was actually do documentation of different kind of integration what the company had already done. And there was a lot of inter interesting cases, including that one that uh, there was integration platform, there came message inside, and somebody fetched that message, and nobody knew that, uh, who, was, uh, who was consuming and what, and so we have to switch off the service that we figure out that who was there. So a uh, lot of interesting stories from that side. Uh, in 2007, I moved to telecommunication, to Comtel. Uh, I have been developer, delivery engineer, trainer, trainer, travel the world, see customers, was more like therapists to the customers, so got a lot of insights. And it was then during the time of uh, financial crisis, so the operators were really scared of that one, that they will come as a data pipes, they are losing revenue, they lose their purpose, so there was actually a lot of talking about cases, what nowadays are platform economy, so but then it was value-added service, revenue sharing, OEM branding, who gets what, what is the place in the marketplace, who owns the customers. So it's actually old story already. Uh, then move it to the product owner for the platforms. Uh, did the pre-sales, customer support, and 2016 I moved to OP, the big digital transformation incoming as a platform, platform product manager for creating new OP.fi, so it was integrating all the OP software together. And then to Enterprise Release Manager, extending from the OP.fi to all software development to OP. And in the end of 2017, moved to Developer Champion to OP Developer FI, the developer port, aren't the developer portal what we launched in last year. Um, especially interesting of histories and whys, and that's why I have a lot of nice stories about integration and APIs. I will start everything by going detour. I have been lucky to get working with the really smart people, but I have been always wondering from my first place that there has the same kind of integration done with the completely different ways, and one team is supporting that one, and seeing that the smart people, even though they are working the same goal, pretty much the same goal, the aims are the same, they are from the same company, but the, they have not been able to actually collaborate well. And there have been coral and even fights. Like, example, I have been in meeting where two really brilliant architects were actually yelling to each other that you have hit an agenda. And I was standing next to them then and figuring out that they, you are actually doing exactly the same thing and you agree everything, but you are here shouting to each other that you have hit an agenda towards each other. So it's a, a lot of confusion that why people doesn't really do work well together. Is it department and people, but people are actually defining the culture of the company. Uh, until last year, I found out this really nice article about the culture from the Harvard Business Review, the Leader's Guide to Corporate Culture. Uh, each of the bubbles actually means that what is the culture of company uh, or persons, and this uh, helped me understanding the situation where the different, different people come, so actually the, uh, inside one company there can be several different cultures, and the, the further away the bubbles are from each other, harder it's, uh, to go exist at the same time. So on the horizontal level is the how the people interact, so independence and interdependence on the other side, and then is the stability and flexibility what defines how people are reflecting to the change. So the example the two smart people 
who were actually fighting. I understand this one last year that they were actually, one was the enjoyment and the result oriented, and another one was from the order and caring side. Even though the target was the same, they were both actually correct, but they reacted differently. I will come back to this one a little bit later on, on my presentation. So I will go now to the ad hoc. So how it goes in the ad hoc? I have seen this one a long time. And seeing that what, what is the end result by doing ad hoc, how it goes from history side and looking by stand, bystanding. So you usually have your base business. It runs fine. It, there comes new threats, new competition, new technology, what you want to try. Uh, or regulation like PSD2 comes alive. You have to do something new. So you actually want to do something new with or, or different kind of opportunities, whatever comes, or there comes some new person who have a really great idea and can say that we can reduce the cost or we can improve our speed or we can completely take new market share for our, ourselves. So what happened next? The next one is that you set up a new team or collect most enthusiastic people, setting a really strong focus of outcome. We have limited amount of the time, we have limited amount of the money, and we have to deliver it that we can prove that our existing is okay. Uh, and then what the rest of the people actually feeling inside the company. They are thinking that they're having fun, they don't have to care about the issues what we are facing, or we are forced to follow certain processes or way of working, and they are having fun, they, they, uh, and we are doing the hard work, and they are just celebrating and spending the money. Um, then it pretty much goes to that one, that the new team, or the enthusiastic ones, actually does everything from the scratch, because they are not actually getting the support from the base organization, from the technical or business side, that how things should be done, what are the tools to use, and it doesn't integrate it to your business model, it doesn't integrate it to your technology, it comes as an Iceland separated, what is and does not connect to anything. And commonly, in the case when you have the proof of concept, new, new team, new things comes to come, there is usually strong leadership at some state who will say, if there is any issues, let me know, I will uh, remove the ob obstacle from you, and it is then strongest that the new team is more isolated from the base business and base technology because there comes coral with, with the new team and with the, uh, with the base business and technology, what you're actually running, what brings the money inside. And then you multiply it by X, because one time is not enough, you have to do several times. Of course, learning needs several times, not all of proof of concept pilots. They are not bringing money, they are not bringing actually the value what you are looking for, but it brings some new value. You want to change the culture more to learning, trying out new things, and the change in the culture is complicated and actually creating a new team to create something new. It's an easy way of trying new culture, but actually where it goes, it's a different story. And with the a lot of experience, but you have done proof of concepts, pilots, new teams, where you ending up. You will have tons of separate bubbles. What, what cannot be integrated together? If you touch one, it, it goes away. So you will have X amount of authentication, X amount of authorization, uh, and thus X amount of different kind APIs and integration. And you can think about now the developer experience, how it feels like that uh, you have assets, but it's really hard to use. You don't know, can you use those assets? Who is supporting those ones internally? Is there any support anywhere? Uh, then then comes the, from the business model side. Think about the, your customer, paying customer. You have two different products, what you have created as a pilot. Uh, two contracts, completely, most likely completely different contracts. They have two completely different kinds of super models. What is really nice, like my colleague is running it on the Nordea side for the APIs. Uh, but uh, if it's uh, separated from the base business, you will have different support and contracts. And uh, the confusion on the company side is uh, the customer side is uh, quite hard. 
why they have done this one, and they are usually overlapping. And then internally, there is big confusion. Who can use what? What are the terms? Uh, can we use it? Why they did our work also? It's overlap. We have, a, have it that already our back pocket. Back po pocket, and uh, now they have done again the same thing. And the biggest one comes that it actually comes as uh, no reusable assets. So you have created something. It didn't fly. It is not big enough. Big business, uh, example, in the banking side, is really hard to get as a big business right away. So you have to be believing that this is the good thing. But when you are doing ad hoc, it actually leaves the assets what you created. They are not reusable. You can learn just something what, what pops up in the front. So uh, I have been personally doing all of this one. So I have been doing the new thing, being my own bubble. And then figuring out that why the base organization doesn't like me, why they want to avoiding me, why they don't, why they don't buy my uh, platform. Uh, well, it is confusing. I have been more often, I have been looking sideways at the, what, what actually happens when people are not going collaborating. They are uh, missing the big picture and there comes just a waste and people are not happy. So, and now back to the culture side. Uh, if we take banking, banking or insurance or telecommunications as a basic one, uh, so if we think in banking, it is out of the safety order and some extent the result. And of course, with the OP, the private uh, private banking goes pretty much to the purpose side. So, uh, big. Corporations have different cultures. It causes that there are frictions, there are ways of doing things. And if we take example safety, the safety is actually in this study, it is uh, uh, they don't want to make changes, but they might, uh, want to optimize the efficiency. So the terms are not so absolutely clear. So the banking side, it's usually the safety one. And then you pop up new team with just a strong focus outside. So it's the result, and then comes the learning nowadays that you want to really learn. So it's really complicated to see that the organization, what is on the lower part, the way of working, way of communication, way of thinking, and how to solve problems are completely different than the new team who has been just created for the creating something new. So it's really hard to get the, the people actually working in the ad hoc side that, yeah, we have a great idea and this is a business for us in the future. You set, a, set it up team, let's learn, let's have a results quickly and don't mind about the best organization because they are slow or bad or uh, they complain about because they actually know things. But what is heading up that say, and they say that that one doesn't work and it's uh, of course a little bit depressing. So you have Whenever you are doing this one, everything has the good and bad points. Uh, but then the strategy part that how to avoid these changes, uh, the cross between the people. So do APIs, simple one. Uh, do, and don't do any APIs, do good APIs with the managed way that they can be actually consume that they can be found, people can onboard it to them. So it's near documentation and all the good things what we have been talking here today and tomorrow. And unfortunately, I have been meeting several cases at OP that uh, there has been proof of concept or pilot beforehand and there comes actually new contact from the outside from the OB developer side that we have uh, we have this business idea and we have uh, actually quite ready software but we actually need this much amount of from you that do you have an API for this one and can we do the business okay okay then I go and see what we have oh we don't have API okay we have been business for the uh, banking and insurance side a long time going going to around the company, do we have some, done something regarding this one? And yes, we have done. We have done pilot. It is in the production and every, all the rights are good. And then comes, uh, can we use it? Hmm, no. 
We don't have actually know how to integrate to that one. Oh, nice one. And then how much it takes the time that we can actually use it for this new business case. The new business case is not big one, but it's actually interesting and could come a big one. And supporting our current businesses, but then comes one or two months. Mm, okay, one or two months of man work for the creating the proof of concept of proof of concept, what could be avoided already by, if the original people have done the APIs, what would be reuse, reusable inside the organization. Unfortunately, sad stories, but have seen the same ones in other places also. And you have to remember that when you have good APIs, you can have actually different kind of culture because the interface is through the APIs, not the, between the people and culture of the company. And the next one is the defining the business playground. Uh, banking side, a lot of laws, regulations, they give the framework what you are allowed to do, but also from the PST2 side, regulation says that you have to open certain information. Example, the account information and payment, payment side, so that actually the customer is owning the, his or her account information, what is good for the customers. But it, it, it comes that the uh, regulation and law says that what you can do, it, it says also what you need to be doing. So it, uh, it defines the playground in a certain level. Uh, but then you have to take also the values of the company. Uh, what are the values what you want to follow? So you have to defining, uh, do you want to do business with the quick loans, with high interest rate? Most likely it can cause issues for your customers. Is it okay or not? Do you want to do business with the military companies? Do you want to fund armies to kill people? Is it okay for business or not? Or well, truck farming or whatever, whatever the limitation is, what the company is actually creating. So there comes the frame where the teams and people can do, move. And then doing the framing, uh, like the forcing regulations, uh, like PSD2, we, in, at OP, we believe that we can go beyond the PSD2. We have a premium, a premium API for accounts, and we are going now towards the opening corporate payments and accounts information through the current uh, modern APIs at OP developer.fi. If you are interested, of actually the corporate APIs, we have two ladies from corporate corporate side in here if you want to talk about the APIs, about those ones. And uh, then comes actually the strategy that you have been defining the frame, is it law or values, then you have to actually go through the places what you want to do first. So is it uh, uh, which part you want to do first, uh, what business case you want to go forward. But anyway, it's after that you have been defining the playground. Uh, one thing what commonly get forgotten is the legal design. So what kind of contracts you can do. So this one actually goes uh, when everything is ready. You have API, you have onboarding pretty much ready. Then you are thinking, oh, I need to make contract actually. Who is responsible to whom? And now when we go to the platform economy, it comes also that which country law you will be applying. What are the terms of use? What is uh, uh, um, if there comes GDPR side, how we contractually manage that one. It is actually a tricky business, and, but in case of banking, we know those ones already, but if you create a new team who haven't, and don't have the business background, it's actually super tricky to manage and get the information from there. And everybody will fall in the same place, or uh, money laundry laws. So when we go to the legal side, we are strong, but uh, actually the business has to be de designing what kind of business want we want to do, which part of the uh, platform eco economy we want to be, do we want to have so our brand in place, is it mandatory C or do we sell just the OEM that uh, somebody else brand is there. Uh, then the big part that uh, comes with the contract is the support. Yeah, you have ready API, you are ready to go and get the customers in, you make contract and then you figure out how I do the supporting. Okay, I do uh, API for the payments, payments API, 
for uh, smaller companies, they web shops, it has to be working all of the time. So what is the correct support model for customers, corporate customers? So is it uh, officials or smaller ones? What is the correct support model? How, how to handle incoming tickets? Who will be managing? How we respond? And uh, if you didn't plan the support beforehand with the legal and contracting side, it will be hard to implement afterwards and your customer will be confused because they will have several different support channels, uh, several different contracts, different people answer your phone or the ticketing system are different. So you have to actually think this one beforehand and creating the interesting parts for the new teams to do uh, innovation. And then a super important thing is remember the uh, developer experience. So API design, authorization, authentication, onboarding, documentation. So you have to actually do the basement ready before you start moving fast forward that you need to have certain amount of uh, basement okay that where you can deploy product where, or code how you how do you do do the development uh, how you integrate it you have to be on the API management the API management needs to be on place that the way to consuming developer portals external internal they have to be figured out where they can find where they are not uh, where to put all the information that the people actually can find it and that they doesn't have to do as an idea that they go, going around the OP and figuring out that have somebody actually do something that this kind before. There is a much better way of doing this one these days. So when you are setting up the new team with the strong focus of outcome, you want to change the culture, make sure that the basement is ready, that the tools what you are providing are actually helping the developers and then the teams to go, to go forward. And it's not only from the technical point, it is also from the contract and legal, legal side and support side. So give the tools what they can actually use and get the benefits out of already done. Think that they don't have to do everything from scratch. Uh, this is purely human business. So you need to be actually really, really carefully communicate where teams can go. So the framework from the legal side, from the contract point, value, strategy, uh, defining what is the space. Because nowadays most of the business cases actually comes, what I have been seeing and witness, uh, it comes actually between the normal uh, business units. Example in the OP, so is it finals, uh, uh, banking, is it wealth, is it insurance? So it's actually borderlines of the different business lines. And uh, so if you haven't been communicated, what is the possibilities where you can go? The teams are actually struck on that. Uh, uh, can we go there? Or depending on the, the culture, but usually, can we do that one? Can we go a little bit across the border and step another business unit feet? Or uh, can we do it uh, without permission or do we need to have a permission to do that one? Uh, can we consume the APIs and uh, uh, try to avoid that one that uh, somebody are limited to smaller one and part of the organization can go further than other ones that somebody else tells, no, you are not allowed to go there. And the other party will say, let's go there, go, go, start to run forward. Uh, then, ending line, uh, first one, remember to create APIs. So, main thing about API strategy, two uh, good APIs, uh, integrate it well, two documentation, uh, figure out how they can discover, how they can consume, how they can be done well. Uh, and remember put the foundation place that you have when somebody starts to do something new, Remember that there has to be the basement has to be fit, good that they actually wants to put their their stuff because there is a, already a lot of information like audit, logging, uh, legal legal information, business information, contract modeling, uh, well everything what the normal business actually gets from uh, doing business longer time. 
but if you are setting up new team or get just enthusiastic people, people are not actually knowing those ones. And you know how to do the support, so make everything that everybody wants to actually integrate there. Uh, going with APIs, it actually, in my eyes, it's more about change of the hearts of the people. It's not the technical side. So technical, technical is sides that the developers have done APIs for the ages. Like my first one, it is ages ago. Then it was fight that uh, should it be done with the brand new web services or any messages. So which one is the correct one? Now it's a web service uh, REST JSON pretty much that uh, should we create a new one in the other organizations. And remember that this is purely human business that we do work as we do. We have our own culture. Especially the older companies, they have a strong culture that are actually enforcing bubbles that it goes forward, but the culture can be also led, and APIs actually can help you change the company culture. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur.